if you've been single for a while and haven't been able to make a profound connection with a guy you feel genuinely inspired by, I'd be willing to bet you've lost track of what makes you most compelling to men. So my commitment to you is by the end of this video, you'll have a renewed insight and hope in what makes you, and I'm speaking to you, hands down, the most attractive, compelling, and irresistible version of yourself in the eyes of great men, and how to sustain it. If you're watching this video, it's possible you're feeling confused because you've worked so hard to become strong and independent, and despite your intelligence, despite your work ethic, you don't see guys lining up to invest time to get to know you, and sometimes they find you intimidating. Maybe you feel like guys only want younger women and want to get physical real quick and you're not willing to go there. And it makes you feel discouraged to say the least to know that someone who is valuable and smart and has depth is not able to show it because you're not giving the chance. Maybe you feel exhausted by this thing called online dating and to you right now, it's become worse than one of these children's books, uh, Where's Waldo, where you have to find the dude amongst so many different challenges. Or maybe you started lowering your standards or started thinking that love may not be in the cards for you, even though inside your heart, you feel like it's there for you for the take. You should have love in your lifetime. You should be able to create a union with someone who feels compelled and excited and lights up with seeing you and vice versa. If you're experiencing any of these things, my heart goes out to you. And the biggest problem is that you are possibly experienced emotional burnout and dating numbness. And the biggest challenge with this is that the more you do, the less you get. You've reached the point of diminishing returns. And let me share why. Because imagine that your belief right now, given what you've experienced, is that it's really hard, it's painful, the guy I want may not be out there. If he is out there, he's already taken. He might ghost me. Like All these experiences you've had in the past put into one moment, the belief around how possible this is isn't strong, which means your emotional state, your level of excitement, your level of insight, your level of curiosity and hunger is not there or is minimized by a lot. So when your emotional state is one of doubt, overwhelm, insecurity, or boredom to begin with, then what do you think happens to the level of actions you take? You take action, you check the, bo the boxes, but you're not taking action from an inspired place. When you don't take action from an inspired place, the results you get are painful. This is what I call elegantly the cycle of shit. And then guess what happens next time? Well, because you have painful result with guy, with a guy, then next time you your belief gets weaker in terms of what's possible, so the cycle repeats again and again and again. When that happens, you start compensating. How do you compensate? Well, you start spending more time on apps, or you get one more app to see if you can make it happen. Maybe you get more expensive facial treatments. Maybe you give in earlier uh, in terms of physical connection because you're afraid that the guy is gonna go away if you don't say yes, you don't want it, you feel it's too soon, and then lo and behold, when you have physical connection early, the guy says, you know what, it's not for me, and by that point you're feeling attached and you feel used. That's the diminishing returns that I'm talking about right now. After working with hundreds of women from around the world who are facing very difficult situations, from ranging from physical abuse in the past or even sexual abuse sometimes, uh, contentious divorces, feeling insecure about their bodies, feeling insecure around their age, uh, not knowing how to put themselves out there, introversion, too much extroversion, all those things and helping them to, regardless of never having gotten the love they want, to finally get it, to create lifelong partnerships with guys who are amazing, who really are all in the relationship, who see them, who love them, who are there for them in great times and in bad times, I can tell you right now that the most attractive part of you is not your face, it's not your body, it's not your intelligence, it's, it's your uniqueness. So what you want to do if you want to express that human inside of you that's never gone, you might think she's gone but she's inside of you, is you need to dial up your radiance and triple down on what makes you unique and special and different, not giving a shit about what others will think about it. Because the worst thing you can do is try to become like somebody else because you think there's something wrong in you, because you think that's what guys are looking for. 
and to start diminishing the things inside of you that not only make you who they are, but they make you feel intensely alive. If you're a guy who's looking for an orchid or for a black narcissus or for a lemon mint, and you think they want a rose, so you diminish the truth of who you are. The truth of who you are meaning your nerdiness, if that's something that makes you unique, or the fact that you like a cappella dancing, or your passion for anime, or maybe your fiction writing, or maybe your chess mindset, or maybe your OCD in cleaning, which for the right guy will be heaven on earth. When you start diminishing those things that make you different, that make you so specific, you lower your capacity to attract the right person. My say to you right now is, you don't need to spend more time on apps necessarily. You don't need to change your personality. You need to learn how you can express more of your inner light and how you can triple down on the things about you that for the right person will be a straight arrow through the heart instead of getting lost in the fussiness of vanilla ice cream that he may not be wanting. He may be wa wanting a rocky road or grape or maybe special pistachio with salt on top. That's what you need to do right now. There's a challenge though. For you to come back and start expressing more of who you are where before you may have experienced getting some pain as a result of that, you need to overcome four specific obstacles. I wanna show you what those are so you're not just stuck with this pump talk about it, but you can genuinely change the way you do things going forward. Before I do that, if you're a woman who's single watching this right now, there's a high likelihood you don't understand what's the root cause of why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 12 years of working with women, identifying what are the most pervasive patterns and blind spots that prevent women from experiencing what they want, and I put them together in a simple quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will give you that answer. So all you have to do is go to the first link in the description of this video. You'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and you'll come up with two things. The answer to the question, what's the number one reason you're still single? And then a report that will show you based on your specific blind spot, what is the number one action you can take today to attract the guy you want in a small fraction of the time. So I'm talking about you being more versus less of you and doubling down on the quirks and uniqueness that for the right person will feel like home. So you can do the same thing with somebody else. Here's the first thing you need to transcend. You need to transcend your survival instincts. Survival instincts are going to place a dark cloud over your head most mornings. When you wake up and you notice that there's people dying in Ukraine and there's an earthquake somewhere else around the world and there's a shooting that took place, your mind is overwhelmed and you're focused on survival. So when you're focused on survival, your brain will tend to go more negative and will tend to go to what's the thing I need to do right now so I can just get by. And what you need to do to be able to really express the most radiance is you need to have a stronger commitment to certain rituals every single day, no matter what, that are gonna help you to thrive when shit hits the fan, when things get difficult, when a guy rejects you, when the apps don't work, you need to figure out what are gonna be those minimums you have to step into every morning, whether it's movement, breathing, dancing, exercise, cold plunging, meditation, or all of the above that you can commit to so that not just that so you can attract the right guy, yeah, that will happen so that you can be the most happy version of you, the most alive version of you. You deserve that and the guys will follow. Number two is you need to relentlessly reframe your past. One of the biggest challenges you're gonna face is as you put yourself out there, as you see more women wanting what you want, as you see women that you in your mind think are more beautiful or sexier or have more pizzazz or they're smarter in some way, when that happens, you need to be able to reframe your past in such a way that you can feel fueled by it instead of stopping you. Because when you're comparing yourself unfairly to other women, one of the things that happens is you compare the best parts in them to the worst parts in you. And sometimes you think, well, this is what happened in the past. Maybe you, something happened that was terrible. You have a terrible marriage, for example, and you're saying, well, what will he think of me when I share what happened? And there's two ways to think about it. He's gonna think less of you because you experienced this, or he's gonna look at you and say, here's a woman who went through hell and back, 
who is smart enough, courageous enough to get out of it, to say, I want more, to have the sensitivity and to have the courage and to have vision to do something about it. So when you focus on what you've gained, when you focus on the gift that took place as a result of the pain you went through, you will be more likely to feel the confidence of where you are today, of the ground in which you stand, instead of thinking like there's something less in you compared to other women. You're not competing with other women. You are uniquely you and there's a guy who wants you if you allow yourself to express yourself more fully and stop shying away into I'm a rose when you're something far more specific and far more beautiful in your own unique way. Third, you need to start being shameless about what's most important to you. Sometimes you start this dating process and there's things that are really essential to you. Maybe it's your faith. Maybe it's some habit that you have. Maybe it's a level of physical connection that you're looking for. Maybe it's a level of intellectual stimulation and insight. Maybe it's your humor. And when you're shameless about it, when you know that's what you want, when you're able to voice it out and express it and not shy around it, then you are far more likely to get it than if you feel like there's something wrong in you for wanting it. The last thing you'll have to do if you want to become the most radiant, the most exciting, the most compelling, the most unique version of you is you need to start looking at the world with fresh new eyes. If you wake up tomorrow and you start doing what I'm sharing right now and you start changing your mindset and you start doubling down on your uniqueness and you start leveling up your radiance, if you look at the world with the eyes of yesterday, like he's just like the other guys or one more guy who disappoints me, you need to look at things saying, I am different, I am more of me, and more of me can get more of the world, basically, right now. So when you experience a guy who's not what you want, move on to the next thing. You, you X that little calendar closer to your favorite holiday, and instead of saying, the guy didn't work out, it's just an expression of why it's never gonna happen. You say, I'm one guy closer to my guy. You look at every human being as a unique individual who can give you something different than what you've experienced before. Hope this is helpful to you. If it is, it would mean a lot to me if you like and subscribe. And more important than that, if you want to, let's say, I'm up for doing this and I'm tired of dating apps and I want to learn how to do this in a way where I'm not relying on them, then I want you to watch this video right here because it's going to show you how to do just that.